What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and we're now just a few weeks launch of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, ring a ling a ding dong or whatever it's called. Many rings in the title, no rings in the actual first season. But uh, one of the biggest cope outlets has been the OneRing.net, which is a far left-leaning like website run by these people. The website itself has no political leanings. Uh, run by that and, uh, you know, block happy Twitter account and all this kind of stuff. It's been well documented that the one ring is a hilarious shill account. Um, but this is a level of gaslighting that I just, I haven't seen yet. And I thought it would be fun to read the article. There's obviously some other news going on too. Uh, shout out, by the way, everyone uh, who picked up. We launched our double caffeinated coffee yesterday, both in whole bean and ground. This is an uh, Ethiopian blend. Uh, for all of you higher level caffeine people, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. You can save with promo code the quartering uh, from my coffee company. Obviously, we have, you know, six or seven different coffees. We've got the cold brew bags. We've got six different organic loose leaf teas. We've got hot cocoa. We've got everything. So I would love if you'd give us a try. We've got nearly 2,000 five star reviews across the board, too. So our stuff is good. The following is an opinion piece written by a quote volunteer staff member, Kelly, who's also known as whatever from a YouTube series, Happy Hobbit. Okay, no disrespect, uh, good for you. The title itself is hilarious. The Rings of Power is earning trust in the fandom. Oh, really? Really? No, it isn't. Every single video that is getting put out, at least by Amazon, is getting downvoted into oblivion. Now, I think we've reached the point now where we're like in the middle of August. We're just three weeks, four weeks shy of the show actually launching. Like, you're either going to give the show a chance or not. Um, you know, for me, I'm going to cover it, so I'm going to watch it. Uh, and I've said before that I'm not like a deep token lore guy. So when I watch the show... I'm not going to be waiting for like a little slip up here or there. I'm interested in whether or not the show is good. Um, there will be others who are deep token lore people who will pick it apart for that. But I'm less offended by it. something being super duper specific. Um, this is like many. On February 13th, I was invited to participate in a live stream hosted by both the One Ring Run.net and Amazon Prime. Mm, access journalism. Shocking. And analyze the very first teaser trailer for Amazon's new series, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, Ringling and Ding Dong. And it was my sister's birthday, so I was excited for the end of Middle Earth Dearth. Dearth, I committed, I only committed to partic participating for an hour. I was relieved to have an excuse to slip away after said time for the initial teaser trailer failed to impress. In fact, it was even worse. It left me confused, worried, and underwhelmed. The visuals were dazzling, agree, but I felt no connection to the imagery or the screen. I was far from alone like many i feared amazon was producing the most expensive tv show in history allegedly around one billion dollars because they saw tokens work as a cash cow and they were going to milk it for all they could well you were right now i do think it's actually possible to like treat something like a cash cow and still do it good like if you really care about cash cowing something like token or game of thrones or the witcher you make a good show like the, you make more money with an actually good show. The person says that they are a fiction author and a screenwriter with a Master of Fine Arts. Um, a few months later, in May, I was invited by Prime Video to a special press event in London, England. So, by the way, when you've been flown around and you've been fed um, and hoteled in nice hotels, you're traveling the world for Amazon, you are not an unbiased person. Like, I mean, now... This is an opinion piece, but this is somebody who's been, you know, offered to get flown to London uh, to, to take part in some event. All right. We remember that disastrous thing. Um, and, not, you know, disrespect to Happy Hobbit. I don't watch their videos. I They seem like obviously somebody who is, uh, you know, a big token fan. So I'm happy for them to have more token. Um, now... They went on, which tries to be a dose of Middle Earth, blah, 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 blah. They go there. They do that. The following day, we were treated to footage and costumes from Rings of Power and a Q&A with showrunners. 
I was once more not impressed with the footage I saw for a while. There was nothing wrong with it. There was no context. I had no idea what had just happened before the scene we were shown where in the story it fell. And in fact, what the story even was at all. It looked and sounded lovely, but there was no beating heart. My own heart sank as I realized I was going to just have to accept that this show wasn't going to fulfill any of my expectations. Once the showrunner spoke, however, I was left with the juxtaposition of hearing from two people intensely passionate about Token. To the point where they opened every day uh, of filming with a Token quote and discussion. And the marketing that they didn't uh, and the marketing that didn't convey that love and respect. Um, I mean, I would say that you know, ignoring Peter Jackson, uh, ghosting him. Look, I know, I understand that the, that like, to be fair, the token estate got involved and they didn't want Peter Jackson involved. So, you know, ultimately with all the money that Amazon had invested, they probably didn't have really any choice in the matter. That said, you know, maybe give the guy an email and say, hey, you know, for these guys over at the token society or whatever, uh, and then just be done with it course everyone went to lunch and all they've so essentially i didn't like it and then i got wined and dined uh and then now i liked it with links to prime video it all comes down to trust well there is no trust and you know optimism is a choice a more difficult one than pessimism fair and i am choosing to go forth on the journey with an open heart and welcome any and all joy along the way same choice is also yours. Also a fine position to have. Very fine position to have. And there's not a lot in this article that I, I like angrily disagree with. This is somebody who is a bigger token fan than me. Fair, you know. But the idea that the Rings of Power is earning trust in the fandom, that's just a, that's a lie. I mean, you could pull up any video and look at the dislikes. You see the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power actor, Lloyd Owen, Token has not fleshed out these characters to the extent that other characters are. Well, we kind of knew that. So, essentially, if you want J.R.R. Token, you want anything that was like Middle Earth that you might know, um, I, I think this is not going to be the show for you. If you're cool with like high fantasy with a token like flair, then it could be. You know, I, I just think the idea that the fans are coming around, that's a, pff, hilarious. You know, you have a bunch of characters that, that the existing fandom does not and will not relate to. Can you do it over three, four years? It's possible. You know, Game of Thrones had its fans, but th those are like more direct characters that people already knew in the books. The task that Amazon has is far, far more difficult. You see, despite Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, including Hobbits, J.R.R. Token made it clear that they were not in the Second Age. So they put them in there anyway, because marketing. Showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay attempted to explain this problem away during an appearance at Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con during the Q&A portion when he was asked, why are there a Hobbit story in the Second Age? Payne replied, well, it's actually technically not a Hobbit story. It's a Harfoot story. Mm, come on. And so Tolkien doesn't say anything about Harfoots not having done anything amazing in the Second Age. He sees it as hobbits before the Third Age didn't do anything impressive. So we felt we had the license to tell a good Harfoot story. I mean, essentially what he's saying is, you know, we put hobbits in it. We're going to tell you they're called Harfoot, but we know people like hobbits and we're going to put them in there. Um, you know, again, the, the question is all of these, you know, deviations from lore and personal like uh decisions about what to include what not to include um these are all calculated financial decisions i just think there's no chance now what did we say uh chris pratt's show had 1.8 million minutes watched or something like that i would be shocked shocked if Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is not easily the number one most watched show in history on Amazon. You're talking, you're not talking about some new show. You're talking about a show that even the most diehard fans, the ones who are kind of quiet right now and just biding their time, they're going to check it out. Is it going to drive people to pay? I don't know about that. Not in the first season. Not if we look at the actual fan reaction to a lot of it. 
I mean, they're doing everything they can to kind of include characters that people might be familiar with, whether it's hobbits or it's Sauron, or they're talking about bringing Gandalf in. I get why they want to do that, but I think that the original fandom essentially has really not warmed up to this. You see, Amazon responded after Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson said they ghosted him, but there's more to the story. This was written yesterday. Amazon weighed in on Peter Jackson. Um, we know what Peter said. Now, what Amazon has said, said, in pursuing the rights for our show, we were obligated to keep the series distinct and separate from the films. We have the utmost respect for PJ and the Lord of the Rings films are th and are thrilled that he's looking forward to watching the Rings of Power. Um, well, yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, the statement fits with reports from back in 2018 where Amazon was reaching out to Peter Jackson, among others, for the show, but no official announcement was ever made. Amazon's clarification that they were, quote, obligated to keep the show filmed separate is particularly intriguing in the light of the alleged sources cited by THR, saying that the estate of author J.R.R. Tolkien, who passed away back in 1973, was opposed to Peter Jackson having any involvement in the Rings of Power. I mean, when Amazon pays you $250 million, again, I guess I can't be that mad about it. I mean, they should have emailed the guy and said the scripts aren't coming, but uh, this show is going to be very interesting I think it's going to be even more divisive than The Last Jedi. Um, but I still want the hardcore token fans to have an amazing show. I really do. So I'm pulling for you. Uh, and and uh, again, a reminder, I'll leave a link to the brand new launched uh, double caffeine we've got. A whole bean and ground in 12 ounce and 5 pound bags over on coffeebrandcoffee.com. Lots of you picked it up yesterday. I'm looking forward to filling up these reviews uh, so we can get some more consumer confidence. I know it's great. I'm just hoping you'll try it. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.